Hey Grace Chapel, this is Sam and Pat in Bangkok, Thailand. We trust that you are all well and safe from the COVID virus. Thailand has actually been blessed to have relatively few numbers of both virus infections and deaths. Um, but like most other nations in the world, um, the people have been greatly affected by the shutdown, especially for the Thais and the lower economic level there as well as refugees who we work with because mo mostly these two groups they have no savings they receive no government assistance um, and most of them have been out of work for the last two to three months um, however because of the generosity of people both here in thailand and around the world we have been able to provide probably about 5,000 meals to the people in the homeless area as well as food packs for refugees from around the world um, probably about 350 families by now mm -hmm. so we really want to thank you for your generosity uh, both in praying for us and in giving towards mm -hmm. these needs thank you one of the many things we like about Bangkok is that we never have to worry about getting cold here we like hot more than cold, so it works well for us. The thought comes to me, how about the temperature in my heart? Is it hot on fire for passion, with passion for Jesus? Do I have passion for the things that are on God's heart? Or has that kind of just cooled down to room temperature because of focusing on myself more than on God? Or just because of... Uh, life every day. There are a number of people in the Bible who were on fire for God. In Jeremiah 20 verse 9, he says that God's word burned like a fire in his heart. And the two disciples that met Jesus on the road to Emmaus, later they said that their hearts were burning as they were listening to him. I have to admit that sometimes Sometimes I am, I think, on fire for God, but, but a lot of times I'm not. And to be really honest, sometimes I don't even care much at all. Um, so what can we do to restart or to start a fire of passion for God in our hearts? And even more so, what can we do to live a lifestyle of passion for Jesus? First of all, we need to understand that passion for Jesus is not automatic. Just because we believe in him does not mean that we're going to be in love with him. The other thing, passion is not, uh, doesn't really have anything to do with our emotions. Being uh, warm and fuzzy in our feelings doesn't mean we're closer to God. And in the same way, you can be white hot with passion for Jesus, but not necessarily have any strong emotions. Being passionate for God is about choosing to put him first in our lives and living a lifestyle of loving him more than we love ourselves. King David in the Old Testament is a good example of this. In Psalm 27 verse 4 and 5 he said, This one thing I ask of the Lord, the thing I seek most is to live in the house of the Lord or to live in his presence all the days of my life, delighting in the Lord's perfections and meditating in his temple. David was basically saying, Nothing is going to be more important in my life than being with God. And I'll do whatever it takes to live a lifestyle of nearness to God. So let's look at a couple of things from David's life that can help us develop and maintain passion for God. First, we need to make God the most important thing in our life. Make time with him each day the most important part of our day. In Psalm 5 verse 3, David said, In the morning, O Lord, you will hear my voice. In the morning I will order my prayer to you and eagerly watch. Many mornings when I wake up I have no passion for anything except coffee. Um, I have to actually force myself to just start thanking God and, and speaking praise to Him. But as I do that, every time, at, before long, worship starts flowing and intimacy with God starts coming. You know, if we are committed to finding a time a day that works for us, even if we're busy, or maybe even if you have small children, 
If you're committed to making time, God will give you a way to do that. Secondly, we need to be intentional on developing a habit of being thankful to God and praising Him, just telling Him regularly how much we love Him. The Psalms are full of this. In Psalm 34, verse 1, David said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. David was making a decision there that regardless of how he felt or whatever his circumstances were, he was going to worship and praise God. And by the way, when he said that, when he wrote that psalm, he was in a terrible situation in his life. Third, we need to make sure that there's nothing blocking our relationship with God and get rid of anything that is. In Psalm 139, verse 23 and 24, David said, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. I try to pray that prayer every morning and then just listen for a minute. And if God shows me something, then I respond, I repent of it. And then I can go forward with confidence that there's nothing between me and Him. The last thing I want to mention is that we need to have a friend or a small group that we can walk together with, that we'll be really open and honest with about our life and about our relationship with God. We need one another. And we need people to challenge and encourage us in our relationship with God. So find someone or find a group you can be accountable with and begin walking together in this quest for knowing God more and being on fire with passion for Him. Let's press on to know Him and ask the Holy Spirit to draw us closer to Him to light a new fire in our hearts. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, that you do love us with deep passion and we want to have passion for you. Holy Spirit, would you lead us into a deeper walk with God and stir us to know you more and to live a life of passion for Jesus and passion for the things of God. We ask you this in Jesus' name. Amen.